Hello. Uh, today I wanted to talk about doing reverse engineering on shared libraries and some of the tools that you have available uh, just in native Linux and also the capabilities of Ghidra scripting interface uh, and the headless analysis tool that Ghidra offers. Most of my experience is doing reverse engineering on embedded systems. And I run into this quite often where I'll run into a set of shared libraries that will contain common data that is usually time consuming to go through and pull out what I'm interested in. And sometimes, so for instance, let's say you have a shared library that contains a constructor for a class. And as you'll see in today's example, um, say that that class, uh, it has a function that allows you to set the name of whatever uh, object you are creating. Uh, I'm going to show you how to, or at least how one approach of how you can use Ghidra's headless analysis tool in order to scan a number of binaries, or in this case, a number of shared libraries in order to uh, speed up your analysis. So what I've done here, and this is kind of a nonsensical example, but basically I have a main uh, program. It is a C++ program and I have a number of shared objects. So if I, if I run this, we can see that the only thing that main does says set name. Um, now, a couple of the tools that you have in Linux available for you are things such as LDD. If you run LDD and the, the name of the program, it will tell you which libraries that it is going to try to pull in in order to execute that bind uh, to execute the binary. And in this case, we can see um, it's the monkey, lion, deer, bear. SOs. Uh, the only reason why it's not able to find it is we're not telling it where to look for it. So if I do if I do something like that, then it says that this is the path in which that it found these shared objects. So another tool that you have um, is object dump. And let me just run it on this. So if you run object dump with the uppercase T option, then you get the exported symbols from the binary. And there's a couple of tools that, that, that'll do this. I believe like readelf will do it. Um, I think it's WS, is that correct? Yeah. So readelf will do it, but I'm I am a fan of object dump. So if you use something like object dump, and we'll throw that into awk, and uh, I'm not sure which column this is, but we'll just go with that. Yeah. So if I throw that into awk and tell it to print the eighth column then I get the symbols here. However, those symbols, as you can see, they are mangled. So one thing that we can do is run that through C++ felt and it'll demangle it for us. So what we can see here is there's a couple of constructors and deconstructors here. There's also a base, which is the set name, uh, which as we'll see in a little while, is what we're going to be targeting with our script. So here in Ghidra, what I've done is I am going to import 
main and I've also gone in and checked this option to load external libraries and I've given that it the path of our shared libraries and I'm going to hit OK here and I'm just going to hit no for now but we can go through here and see that Ghidra has automatically pulled these into the same project and I'm just going to do analysis on all of them all at once this shouldn't take very long by the way if you are interested in following along uh, or if you want to do this after you've watched the video I'm going to link the location of where you can go out and download all of these but it's on my github page so one of the things that if we run like file main on this and we see that this binary is stripped this is stripped as well so we're not going to have symbols if we want to go to like main so the way to determine uh, where main is is to find this function called entry sometimes it's called start but find this function and you're going to see this libc start main and it's going to be the first argument right here so this is going to be our main function and what we can see from this the only thing that main does is go out and it makes monkey, lion, bear, and deer. If we go into the, one of these functions, then we see over here that Ghidra is telling us that this function is located in the shared library. <clears throat> now, uh, we could go over here and find where that function is, or we can just tell, I believe if we click right here, so if we just click right here on the function, then we will automatically switch over to the location of where that function lives inside of the shared library. And here we can see what we would expect whenever uh, we call a, uh, a constructor, it's calling the new operator and then creating a this pointer and then that is being passed into uh, our constructor. So here we can see that set name function that I was discussing earlier and we can see that uh, it appears that we are setting the name of this monkey uh, object that we're going to create to be George. And we can assume that uh, these other functions, we'll just go to lion, these other function or these other constructors also have the same set name in them. We can see that the name for the lion is Simba. So with the example here, as I said, it's kind of nonsensical because we only have four shared libraries. It wouldn't take very much time to go through all of these and pull out all the names if we were doing, uh, you know, some type of real analysis on this. However, uh, what if you have hundreds of binaries or shared libraries? Uh, that's going to take, again, a significant amount of time. So what you're going to want to do is try to script up uh, a way in order to go through all the libraries, see if they're, they're calling this set name, and then pull out the argument that's being passed in. Ghidra has this, what they call the flat API, flat program API, that in this example, what we're going to do, we are going to get a list of all the instructions uh, starting at uh, the first instruction. So what this is saying, I want to 
get the current program's instructions, starting at the first instruction, and then I want to uh, go through each of those instructions, and I want to get the uh, mnemonic string and print that out. So let me show you what that is going to look like. Wrong one. All right. So here, I'm running the program, or running the script, and it's pulling out every uh, every instruction, and then giving me this uh, value of the instruction right here. So here, as you can see, I am just adding a condition that I only want it to print out the string whenever it's a call. So if I run that, first let me clear it, and I'll run it here. And then it's only giving me calls. So then, if I add this, what this is going to do is this is going to give me a calling address of whatever current function that I am in, or whatever current address uh, that this instruction is in, um, it's going to get me that that function. And what this is going to do is get me the address in which um, I am making a call to. So if we see this, um, what this part, what this is going to give me is the name of the call address and what this is going to get me is the name in which uh, this is in. Essentially what I'm going to do is walk backwards from this call, get each instruction until I find an instruction that is loading a string because I know that this is a, a string at the second parameter here. Um, so I'm going to walk every instruction back until I get the string value and what I'm going to do is print that string value out. Uh, so if I run this then I can see that it found the name of the lion uh, and it is Simba. So what we, what we can do now is since we have the script written, we can use Ghidra's Headless Analyzer in order to go through these four libraries and automatically extract the data that, that we are interested in. The, the tool is Analyze Headless, and you can find it in the, the support directory. I want to analyze headless. And I want to give it a path, uh, and I'm just going to give it a path with pwd, which is the current directory that I'm in, and the name of the repo that I want it to create. And I want it to tell it to import. All of the files, and in this case, in the build directory, all files in which are .so's, and make that recursive, and I'm going to give it a script path, and actually, I don't need to give it a script path, I just need to tell it that I want it to run the post script test.py. That's the script that we created. So if I run this, uh, oh. don't need that part. Um, there we 
we go. All right. So as you can see, it only took a couple of seconds there in order to run. Uh, and all of our, what, what it printed out is inside of this. Uh, so in order to clean this up a little bit, what we could do is we could pipe this out to grep and tell it to print out on found. And now as it goes through, There we go. We can see that the bear's name is Blue, the deer's name is Bambi, the lion's name is Simba, and the monkey's name is George. So in order to give you a little bit more help um, and tell you what some of the features do and some of the options do for the Analyze Headless inside of the support directory, you could find this Analyze Headless HTML file.